All right. Well, hello, 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 everybody. How are you tonight? It's me, El Guapo, Caesar, coming at you. Uh, and we are in the midst here of a little live stream that I am doing. We will be tonight, we will be drawing for your viewing pleasure. We're going to be uh, drawing Jeremy Lott's movie men, one of the characters from that. But before we do that, I would be remiss if I did not mention my own campaign. Jeremy's campaign has already been funded. Uh, this is my campaign, Chango, The Broken Veil. And it is currently live now on Indiegogo. We're at about 8% with six backers. Uh, and uh, before I go into any more detail, let me just go ahead and play the trailer for you. is plagued by the ability to see demonic entities since the age of six. Now, as a teenager, he looks to be rid of this burden once and for all. But is it a curse or something more? All right, all right. Yeah, so uh, big thank you to uh, those that have uh, subscribed already that have backed the campaign. I uh, would re really like to see uh, some more action on this. So um, hopefully we can get the ball rolling here over the next uh, week or two and really uh, make a big push on this uh, campaign. I'm putting a lot of work into it, looking to have all the art done for this uh by the end of this month and uh yeah so you know come on board we got a lot to do and very little time to get it done we got 50 days for the campaign uh so we've given myself enough time there but i'd like to get it funded so that i can start uh doing stretch goals and stuff like that so um by all means please give it a look all right so without further ado let me open up my clip studio here and we are going to be drawing tonight one of the characters here get over here from movie man so i'm going to pop this over here real quick so you guys can see that this is uh jeremy lots comic and uh what's going on here ah oh, here we go so i will be drawing one of these comments you can see his campaign is funded all right so that's congratulations on that and uh we're drawing one of these characters so because I'm partial brunettes and I like witches. We're going to do this. It looks like she's got some kind of magic wand or something here. I don't know her name. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, let's see. Venus. That's her name. Venus is her name. All right. So we're going to go with that. We're going to draw Venus tonight, y'all. So let me get going on that. All right. 
So let's see what we can get old Venus here to do. All right, so I'm just kind of laying in the structure here for Venus. Get a pose, right? Let's see here, that's a rib cage. Got her pelvic area here. Maybe make it do something a little dynamic. Bring this leg out like so. And we're gonna plant her foot down like so. Yeah, we're gonna construct these lines here, our foot here. And let's see, kind of fill this. Mm, let's exaggerate that a little bit more. Shall we? Feeling the exaggeration like I wanted here. Uh, we'll work it out. Bring this on. Yeah, like so. Not really sure what the whole story is about here, but there is a wand, right? So it's some kind of magic here that Venus. Can wield. It looks like from what I was seeing on the page there is that um, each of these characters has, uh, they have some kind of uh, magic weapon of some sort. Let's move this head up a little bit here. Yeah, some kind of head here or something. I'm oh, sorry, magic wand. Needs a little bit more exaggeration, I think. All right, so we're going to scrap that whole thing. We're going to scrap it. I didn't like the way that was going. Did not like the way that was going. All right, let's try something else here. Um, do, do, do. Maybe I'll go with a bigger pen here. All right, so let's see what can I do here. This here, put it here, there, here. I'm gonna follow her spine. Let's go this way with her spine, like so. It's gonna be where rib cage is at. Here, I'm 
over here like so. Here, or here. Okay, we got something here. We have something here. Over here, shrink this a little bit. So here I'm just laying in my rough shapes, getting the um, getting the pose down. Best as I can. Hey, there we go. Tank came in. Let's see. Lady Celtic. Yo, do I sound drunk? No. Lady Celtic, I'm not drunk. I'm actually tired. Marcus Given, what's up? How you doing? And Lady Celtic gave Marcus Givens a, uh, a howdy right back. All right. So, yeah. So, see, when I get tired, apparently I sound, I sound drunk. So, um, not good, but... You know, I'll try to liven it up a little bit here. I don't want people to think that I'm imbibing uh, copious amounts of liqueur. And that is not the case. What's up, Marcus? I'm doing good. Just got back from uh, vacation, back to my home in uh, Florida, and uh, ready to ready. Oh, in the 
get back in the swing of things and uh, you know drawing other characters from other creators, independent creators. So that is what I am currently doing. And this character is a character from Jeremy Lott's uh, book. I don't know if you can see that here. Yeah, it is uh, called Movie Men. Movie Men. So this is what I'm doing here right now. Let's see, let me kick another layer in there. Change my color. And um, let's see, why don't we say that maybe some tentacled creatures. Just trying to get her, all right? So we're gonna draw some tentacles here. Right. Come back here, put another one back here to add. And maybe we'll throw one more here, just a little bit thinner than the rest. Trying to create some depth. Still some. suckers right let's throw some suckers in there a few more here all right let's drop the opacity down on that and the opacity down on this a little bit. Just for me a little more. All right, let's create a third. And let me go on with some tight pencils here. And let's try to get her look down. So she's got, looks like she's got some long black hair. Okay, uh, brunette, attractive, so let's go in a little bit here, and I'm going to draw the eyes up a little bit. Um, hey, let's get some likes, absolutely. All right, uh, okay, no, but listening to you makes me see <laughs> Lady Celtic throwing mad shade at El Guapo right now because I'm putting her to sleep, apparently. But hey, listen, you're tired, right? Trying to get you to get some rest. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so let's see. Now we're going to go to the face here of this character. It makes the pen a little bit, pencil a little bit smaller. All right, so let's put a little bit of a make her eyes a little bigger here all right and then we're gonna see here looks like the character has kind of a perky nose so Let's put those in there. And obviously do a mouth open thing because she's fighting 
a tentacle monster. And that can't be easy. All right, so let's see. Let's start structuring the head a little bit here, like so. All right. And I don't know, let's see, do you really see her here watching this? Don't remember. Don't remember. Yeah, you can see her ear a little bit, so let's throw here. And then her hairstyle, her hairstyle. Got long black hair, but I want to make sure I get it just right. So let me look at my reference, my character. All right, I see. So she's got kind of like a, a widow's peak of sorts here. Let's make this here first part of the uh, of the exaggeration of the character. Bring it around the back like so, and actually come in here. We're gonna draw her. She's got a a shirt like a golf shirt she wears from the um the uh uniform of the movie theater that she works for so let's get that in there um all right let's her hand here now she's gonna be holding this wand here so let's come up here like so all right so draw the wand out get here put the shirt now let me figure out something here. Do they tuck their shirts in? Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like the shirts actually are one of those shirts that are meant to be worn tucked out. All right. So we're going to create some of this tension here. And let's create this. Let's see here, here, and around, like so. Around like this. This is gonna get in some pull here, some pull there, All right? Um, <laughs> they felt like it's getting back and saying, I'm not tired. I'm not tired. Okay. You're not tired. Well, then, in that case, I better make sure that I don't make you tired. That means I got to elevate my own energy level. But I am a little, I myself am a little tired. I got in late last night and I really couldn't sleep today uh, or last night. 
uh, and even today. So I'm kind of going on fumes right now, but I figure I got to get some drawing in because really haven't uh, been able to do it much while I was on vacation. And so before I get going real hard into the uh, Chango pages, I figure I might as well uh, get some warm up in. Now, let's see here. Erase that because this character, as it's, let's see, this shirt would probably pull up a little bit here. Have a pinch point here, and then the fabric pulls up this way. All right, so let's check our blue line there. Okay, well, we're doing all right there. Doing all right. Okay, so get here. And I'm not sure about the pants. I know they kind of, they look like they flare out a little bit. So I'm going to draw those in. Um, the shoes look like some kind of soft sole athletic shoe. All right. Oh, no one's been streaming? Oh, my gosh. Well, I thank you and uh, uh, that you tuned in then because, you know, although I would have streamed anyway, would it, it would have stuck without having uh, Lady Celtic, one of my regulars, coming in. But, yes, I know. I haven't been able to stream. Obviously, like I said, I was away on vacation. I need to catch up with some family and stuff, which I did do. That was good, but now I'm ready to get back to work and do what I need to do. All right, so let's get these tentacles here going. All right, draw those in here, like so. Put some of these suckers on here. And Marcus is just chilling. Thank you, Marcus. And thank you for chilling. So, so far, I got three watching. I'm going to assume that that is Marcus Gibbons, at the very least, Lady Celtic, and we have an unknown watcher, whoever that may be. I know I sent Jeremy Lott, whose comic this is. I did send the link to him directly. Be nice if he popped in, though, huh? So he can talk about his comic uh, but even if he doesn't that's cool too we're just here drawing the unknown person is me dun, dun, dun. <laughs> mystery solved there we go I forgot that I count they count me. So with this one here, I'm doing more of a uh, cartoony look to it. Tank gave me a light. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, Tank's a, a, a great person, a great uh, promoter of the uh, independent comic scene. 
thankful to have someone like that around. Lady Celtic also is a big promoter, and uh, I know Mark is a supporter as well. So it's all good stuff. So let's see here. So we're gonna do, 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 do make this here. We're gonna put this behind that one. So, knock that line down, knock those lines down, see what we got. Mm, we got a little something there, but I think I need to throw in. Let's move these tentacles here. Let's move them a little bit. And let's do this. Move them over. All right. Let that reboot. And come on now. There we go. All right. Knock that out. Let's bring my blue line back up. Kind of, I just wanted to see a little bit more for a little bit more for here. And let's see the shirts, collars like this, our neck there. I think there was like an M here or something, but I don't know if you're going to see that. But we got to draw. Right. Let's knock that blue line down. All right. We're going to reduce the opacity on this, or let's just do that. And then let's hit it with some ink. Oh, with some ink, create a new layer. Here's G pen. All right. Get it on his face a little bit. Make the eyelashes here. I don't know, can you see the fear a little bit here? And your eyes start to come together. Those tentacles are scary. Oh, uh, no. Who do we have? Hey, it's Jeremy. Hey, what's up, Jeremy? Uh, not a lot. Just saw that you are doing this, and I thought I'd, uh, you know, pop in and say it's looking good. Oh, man, awesome. Yeah, thanks for joining. I, I, I know I sent you the link just to kind of, like, you know, uh, maybe 
give me a little bit of background and anyone else who may be on the stream about the, the character. So who's okay. the character that I'm drawing now? If it's the one with the one, then you're drawing a girl named Venus. Venus, okay. So this is Venus, right? Yeah. Um, and she's uh, one of the th three uh, female movie men. Uh, okay. And they all work at a, a theater in Bellingham, Washington. And um, they uh, there is what is called a, um, a reality bomb that knocks all the monsters off the screens, but it also gives these uh, workers at the theater um, weapons to uh, combat the monsters and knock them back onto the screens. Great, yeah. So I noticed that each of the I didn't uh, notice that, and I said something. Uh, it looks like each of the characters has a uh, a specific um, kind of like a enchanted weapon of sorts. So she, hers is a wand. Yeah. Uh, so it's a a fully realized um, wand that she can readily control, or is she figuring out how to control it? Yeah, she's figuring it out. Um because what happens at the in the comic book the first one is that you know these they don't get these weapons until they're in great peril and then they got to figure out how to use them in the nick of time right i see nice that's a i love that concept so they don't just automatically appear they have to actually need them in order for that for that to happen yeah yeah, oh. uh, yeah. i i you know I, I won't uh i don't think this ruins any very serious plot points to say that when she gets her wand, she goes, I have a wand. What should I do with it? And then all everybody chimes in, wave it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So the uh, the project, I see that it did get funded. So congratulations on that. Thank you. And um, the artist that you uh, have on the project, who is that? Uh, his name is Doug Curtis. Uh, and he's been doing uh, internet comics for a very long time. He's actually uh, Flying Ferret goes back to 1996. Um, and he's done a uh, flying ferret and spanner and he does a, a sort of daily comic strip called uh, true north and uh, He's a very talented guy, and I, I like him a whole lot. Right, right. Yeah, great with expressions. Yeah uh, Which uh, you need because he seems to be more of like a, a traditional cartoonist. Yeah So uh, which I like that uh, yeah, so how did how did you how did you end up you know hooking up with this guy? Well, what happened was um, so I have several different comic books um, in development, and you know I so I would write the idea up and you know something of a script or whatever I had, um, and then I would approach an artist and say, you know, I, can I pay you to do some uh, design work for me? And if that works, um, you know, can we do? uh you know a few pages of this comic and um in in doug's case the design work was i mean as close to flawless as you can get um and we and i got him a script pretty quick for most of the comic book and he turned that around and um he surprised me because i um i thought it was going to come back with you know pencils and inks uh, instead it came back with pencils and inks and color um and uh also lettered wow so it's like wow. Wow, that solves a few problems right there wow that is amazing that yeah. is amazing. wow he did all that work huh yeah so Sorry. that's pretty impressive man yeah um you know and he's he, it's the kind of i guess we probably should have had a conversation about that but it's the kind of thing that he's been used to doing because he's been doing his own uh you know, web comics for so long, you just thought, well, why wouldn't I do that? Um, anyways, so uh, we got the comic uh, mostly done. We got uh, Wicked said we will publish it, um, at, but the the deal they work out with uh, people is that they um, it, it's better for you if you crowdfund it first, um, and then they'll help you with fulfillment of that, and then they'll um, keep it in print after that fact, right? Man, Groovy, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I love the Wicked guys. They are very, uh, they're cool, very cool human beings. Um, and uh, so, but the problem was it was only 16 pages long. And so we did a, a rush in the last, I don't know, week of the campaign to, uh, or before the campaign, to get uh, all the pages done so that the day uh, we posted it, we could say, this comic is done. Uh, you know, the, 
the digital part of it. Um, right. And uh, we're we're aiming to ship it in July. I I still think that that's going to be true for a lot of people. Or the the July Fourth, um, uh, you know, holiday made it so that the proofs are a little slower. But as long as we don't need to run into any hangups with the proofs. Uh, we'll get it to a lot of people this month, and uh, we'll get it to you know some additional people the month after. Oh, that's fantastic! So you're uh, because you had the uh, I would say the the advantage of having someone that was able to do all that work in one shot. That that must that must have took a lot of pressure off you. Uh, oh yeah, sure. That's fantastic. Yeah, when it, the, so some of the other projects, I thought I had some of that figured out, and um, um, you know, it's, it's still some of them are still a work in progress because I didn't. So right. So okay. So you you say you have a lot of projects. So you've been uh, uh, writing for uh, quite a while, huh? Yeah, I mean, I look. I'm a writer and editor. It's my trade. Um, but I wasn't. You know, I was just a comic book fan. And I saw a lot of people doing these crowdfunding things. And I, I just like the idea of fans saying, you know, we don't, for whatever reason, we don't like uh, a lot of what we're seeing in comic book uh, stores these days. We don't think we're getting a lot of good options. We, some of it, you know, is good, but a lot of it's not what we want. Um, and we think we can do better and we're going to. Right. Um, and uh you know, that's great. I thought that that's wonderful. And I decided I should, uh, you know, throw in on that. So that's what I'm in the process of doing. Nice. Yeah. So I do notice that you, you know, you're uh, pretty consistent on the, uh, on the Twitterverse, uh, which is drama central for the internet. Oh, uh, <laughs> with, yeah. You know, you're, you're definitely uh, pretty adamant about, you know, let's, Keep the drama in comics. I actually saw a post that you put up today with a T-shirt that said that. I yeah. said, "That's pretty good. I like that shirt." <laughs> but um, yeah, and, and 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 actually, I'm a big proponent of that. You know, and it's unfortunate because um, you know you have uh, this this platform of uh, Indiegogo, and then you have the uh, crowdfunding platform of um, of Kickstarter, and you know, it's a sad thing that happened on the way to crowdfunding is that each platform seems to have gotten its own, shall I say, reputation. So, you know, um, I have done basically Kickstarters before uh, mm -hmm. and uh, no problem. I, you know, they've been funded and that sort of thing. I've done it with other people. Uh, and then, you know, I'm thinking, well, you know, obviously people, you know, like what I do, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And so I said, well, let me, you know, I'm going to put out my own stuff and, you know, see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I put out this campaign. Yeah. And I'm thinking, all right, well, we're at least going to get to 10% on the first day. No problem. Right. We'll get there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and maybe even, you know, I was looking at it that maybe even by the halfway point, we would actually be around 50, 60%. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, and, and it was the most amazing thing that me and my, the writer that I'm working with on this, Ben, who's also had stuff that he's uh, uh, successfully funded on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. was looking at what was happening. And it was like, why is no one back in this book? Why is, why is none of the people that, you know, we, we know that we've backed their projects and, you know, we think that would, they would back our projects have not. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I, I asked the, the question flat out to some friends of mine, just privately, and they were like, well, because it's on, it's on Indiegogo. Yeah. And that is, it's a comic skate. And yeah. we're not, we're not, you know, we're not pro comic skates. I was, well, I'm, don't, I never said I was comic skate. I'm just yeah. a comic creator putting out a comic that I think is, I don't care whether you're comic skate, SJW, a normie NPC. If you feel like picking up my comic, the comic is for you. It's for whoever wants to buy. It. Like I know, I know, but you know. And so I, I kept hearing that man. It's like, wow, you know. Um, and so I'm I'm over here like, 
Jesus, how do I, how do, how does one fight that? You know, that perception it seems, and it, and it's not just these these groups; it's others. Ben was coming across the same kind of uh, issue as well. You know, we're like, wow, that not right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh the division of it, it's very annoying. Um, the, one of the things I will say is that some people will run campaigns on both. They'll do one on Indiegogo and kick then in Kickstarter or the other way around, just so that you because we they're because the audiences are different enough that sometimes you can kind of get um, uh, the way I've heard it described is that Kickstarter has foot traffic, um, and Indiegogo has uh, a lot more freedom, and I, I think that those are both accurate, right? And um, so if you can get people to Indiegogo. Um, I mean, obviously you do good art, um, uh, you know, you can sell them on it, but it's harder to get them there. Yeah. It's funny, but you know, nonetheless, you know, I'm positive and, you know, just keep going and, you know, do my thing. Um, From the, art, the art I'm seeing right now, you, you, you have good reason to be positive. Yeah. I, and like I said, I, and, and I've met so many cool people and so many creators that, they just want to make good comics, you know, and, and I'll be honest, even some of my friends are a little SJW-ish, and that's fine. I love them anyway. I've done stuff with them and worked out projects with them. And, um, uh, you know, they see some of the same things that we've seen as comic creators in the big two. It's like, wow, why are they, why are they doing that? Why are they going that way? And, you know, and, and it's like, well, it's kind of like they're not even telling stories anymore. I almost feel like I'm getting, you know, the more you know kind of commercials like they do <laughs> on NBC. Oh, no. you know, like, oh, by the way, here's your comic, the more you know. It's like, okay, well, but that's not what I'm coming to comics for. I can see that on TV, you know. Um, and, uh, and so the people that are uh, on, on this community – you know, they just want to make good comics, man. I don't think I've come across anyone that just wants to, you know, oh, I, I do comics gate because I'm all comics gate. A lot of the people that I'm following now just want to do the comics. They just, you know, are tired of seeing the same old thing. And, you know, I've been an independent comic creator for over 25 years. Uh, I've worked on a lot of different things. And, um, and you know, people know who I am and that sort of thing, and that's that's cool. Yeah. Uh, but I like that freedom of being able to create your own things. Like, all right, for instance, here we got movie, um, this movie men thing that you created, right? Yeah. So it's a good concept, okay? It ties things that you, it ties comics together with movies. Yeah. Okay? Which people, most people that read comics, they love movies too, and that's that's. Uh, how I feel. I love I love movies. Yeah. Uh, then the fantasy of seeing the movies come to life, which obviously we've all had. Right? One of my favorite movies is uh, uh, is uh, Monster Squad. I actually watched it the other day, uh, and it was like you know that to me that movie still holds up now. All right, yeah. I was letting my my seventeen year old son was watching it. He was like, "What's this?" I said, "Here, look at this," and. It's we're talking about what the 80s or so when that movie was out, like, early 90s, something yeah. like that. And he made the comment, said, Wow, you know what? The special effects that use your they use there actually kind of still hold up without all the CGI. Yeah, like, well, yeah, there was a whole lot more thought put into these films, uh, back then. All right, so what made you decide to do this type of story because it's not your usual fare? Yeah, um. I used to go to a lot of movies in the theater. And uh, so, I mean, I like literally I would go to, you know, 50 movies in the theater every year at, at a minimum, sometimes like 70. Um, and so the more you go there, the more you start to think about the movie theater, right? Um, and uh, th at one point, Regal Cinemas, they changed their uniforms so that they kind of looked like dorky X-Men outfits. And and so you, liter you had me going up to... Um, several workers there and say, do you feel like a superhero in that? And they never did. But um, it got me to thinking like, what kind of a, how would that work? How would these people that work here become a super team? What kind of a 
you know, minutes would they fight, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, so finally, uh, you know, when you go to see a movie, that like five or ten minutes in, you get an usher that comes in with a glow on and he checks the exit to make sure that, uh, you know, no one's sneaking in. Yep. And I thought, well, what if he found a bomb when that happened? And, you know, got trampled and got up just in time for it to blow up. And I said, well, that's great, but then it's, the story's over. And then I said, well, wait a minute. What if it's not a, a, a normal bomb? And, you know, this is where I'm talking with myself and wondering what I'm even saying, right? Mm -hmm. And I go, well, what, what do you mean, self? And I said, well, what if it knocked all the monsters off the screen and then these workers at the theater had to go get them back? And, ah. bam, you know, all right, there it is. There's your comic book. And then, you know, uh, the rest of it took a lot of work, but it was, uh, you know, the, the groundwork was all there. Nice. Oh, man, I love that. I love how that it's funny how, how inspiration strikes, right? Oh yeah. You know, but uh, yeah. I, and I love that, man. I love that. So, all right. So this first book that you have, mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, uh, it's with uh, movie monsters. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's why I have the tentacle monster here. Yeah. Um, were you thinking of doing any other uh, genres? with this concept the so the second story is going to be a crossover movie men meet sport man and they're going to team up to fight a giant robot um and then beyond that i've got it's mostly movie monsters but you know there's that means a that's a broad swath of things um i want to do movie men meet frankenstein because i think that would be a really good story yeah <laughs> i agree uh so yeah. I love the classic Frankenstein. All right, man, that's great. So, so um, do you uh, do you see this as being, you know, uh, several stories that you feel you can tell out of this? Other than, so you basically given me one to like two more. You got the robot, and then you want to do the Frankenstein. Yeah, and I um, there's also so I got to thinking. Well, you know, they don't all have to come out. There people watch movies in more places than just movie theaters, right? You have these, uh, you know, flicks on the bricks or, or you know, outside movies during the summers. And what if they were at one of those things and they came out of the screen, you know? And so I, I'm a huge uh, fan of the Bellingham Bells. They're a, a local baseball team. And so at some point, I think uh, if this continues, and I think it will, um, there, you know, it's going to be movie men a, a night at the the ball game, and uh, you know something's going to come out of the screen there. Right. No, so. that's 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 pretty cool. You know, uh, almost one of these things where this reality bomb goes off. Yeah. They defeat the monsters come out the screen, but you almost think there's got to be some kind of lingering effect. You know, the bomb goes off. There's probably people there. Maybe there's something on. The people are taking it with them. And yeah out into the world and uh there's a lot you there's a lot you can do with that you know what was in that reality bomb uh and then maybe uh do something where uh they're going to other uh movies and other types of movies you know like maybe they're going to go see a gangster movie and then the gangster yeah. come out you know and uh these team uh, so this is going to be your, this is your core team right the here yeah, it's my core. The I don't, I don't, you know, who knows, but I don't foresee it changing much. But the I will say that there is a history that they don't realize to start with that we'll also explore as the thing goes on. That's ah, good stuff, man. It's good stuff. I like it. So, yeah, and you're doing a bang up job on this. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. I'm pretty quick <laughs> when I need to be. Um, but I'm just, I'm just having. Listen, when I see characters like this, and I'm, I'm interested in it, I, uh, I get into it. I like it, you know, and I, I do like the premise of what, what you have here, cool, uh, with these characters, and just, gotta, yeah. yeah, you know, doing, doing, um, like power effects is always a tricky thing. You can never know. It's always got to be a little bit different each, each time. Yeah. Well, another thing is that, you know, you, you because you've done this quite a bit, 
you have confidence that a lot of you know beginning writers just they wouldn't be able to do it nearly this fast because they'd be second guessing themselves the whole time. Yeah, there's a lot to be said for that. So um, let me ask you another question. All right, so you've got th this thing here, and uh, you have other other thoughts, other stories that you that you're looking into. So aside from uh, monster movies, what what are the things that motivate you as a writer? Like, oh yeah, um, the sort of broader motivation. I look, I I like to tell. Um, some of the stories that I'm going to tell are going to seem a little bit more political on the surface, but I'm only, it's just because I'm using current events as a jumping off point. It's never going to be because, uh, you know, I think I've got something larger to say. Because uh, if, I, if, I, if I have something larger to say, I'll just say that in an essay. Um, that's not a problem. But, um, you know, like I've got a story about I, uh, that I'm writing and maybe a by canales will end up drawing about uh an alien invasion in uh south america where they a bunch of aliens land and they start this uh uh anti-american uh uh cult and and end up marching uh you know uh their their own army uh, uh you know up through mexico right right that sounds vaguely um and not, and I know your story is different, but there was a, a, I think, a South American science fiction story, um, and it was pretty famous. And I'm trying to remember the, I, I, all I can remember is how beautiful the art was on it. But it was almost like that it was like an invasion happened. It just happened in South America. Yeah. And the, people, the people there are trying to deal with with it and it was really it was beautiful the art and i wish i could remember and, I, and but I, I could see it in my head the art was absolutely you know, if you remember in the future just drop me a line I, i'll obviously look into it that's yeah it. i'll see if i can find that for you because i i think uh first of all i think you would fall in love with it uh and then um it might it might uh inspire you you know with with some with some thoughts and ideas because what was neat about it is that the writer uh, even though he was telling science fiction, which is really an American genre, he um, he added such a really nice uh, fla you know flavor of his his people um, uh, and the the attitude and the the culture that they're in into it, which I thought was fascinating. Cool. Yeah. So all right, so you're into that. You're into uh, doing like uh, not so much political but just kind of current event style stories yeah, stuff that, that riffs off of current events but goes yeah. in a really different direction um but i also i mean look there's a, a comic i've got that's close to done um called murder um and by which i mean a murder of crows and you have this guy who um is uh imbued with the great crow spirit and he's like a kind of like a superhero for the crows um so that's a thing that's almost done i think that'll end up maybe being launched as a part of uh, another Indiegogo that I'm not even running. Right. Uh, and um, I don't know, there's, I, I, one of my characters that at some point I'll get out there is called Beer Man. So that'll be fun. <laughs> Beer Man. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I love that. It sounds cool. Yeah, man. So, okay. So um, right now, what are you, what do you have on your table right now that, that you're, absolutely have to get out and uh what is it that is really pricking at you that you're trying to push off but the more you do the more it just keeps coming to the fore oh yeah there's that um i mean this is the thing i absolutely have to get out is is movie men but that's almost i mean that's done it's just there's some dotting of i's and crossing of t's and making sure some last minute stuff gets done um then we're, we've announced a sequel, um, which is, you know, Movie Men meets Sportman. And I really need to work on getting that script done uh, because that uh, the, the guys that own Sportman get to look it over and uh, okay any of his dialogue, as I said, to make sure he doesn't uh, engage in unsportsmanlike conduct. <laughs> um, you know, beyond that, I, uh, and I apologize, I'm a little sleep deprived right now because I'm a new father and... You just don't sleep that way. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I know I've been there myself nine times. So yeah, wow. <laughs> uh, respect, respect. 
Um, and uh, so the, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm literally losing my train of thought here. Um, the, I, I came up with a really good title for a story while I was in the um, the hospital this last week. Um, you've, you've heard that saying, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Yes. Yeah, well, in this case, the, the, it'd be a crime comic titled, I'll sleep when you're dead. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So obviously a little bit different than what you've been doing lately. This, I, I, I imagine that this is going to be pretty violent. Yeah, there, it, it would. I'm not saying it's my take on John Wick, but it's my take on John Wick. Yeah, no, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell what you're cooking. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, oh, that's great, man. That That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, oh, shoot, I don't like the way that looks. Um, well, I, 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 unfortunately, the baby is just starting to yell, so I got to run. But yeah, um, no problem. Thanks for popping in and, and, and letting us know a little bit about, uh, you know, what you do and, and all that stuff. It's always good to catch up with the creators that I'm doing these little drawings for. But yeah, Jeremy, thanks a lot for popping in, man. You guys, you have a good night and congratulations on being a dad. Will do. Thank you. And it looks amazing. All right. Thanks, buddy. All right. Bye bye. Uh, yeah, Lady Celtic, nine times, <laughs> nine babies I've had in this, in this house, in my home that I've raised. We had we have five watching now, F five people also. I hope I didn't put everyone around. But that right there was the uh, creator of uh, this character here that I'm drawing. So cool, huh? All right. So I think th this is her name is Venus. Her name is Venus. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. Your desire. All right, let's see. I'm gonna throw a little, throw a little background in here. See what we can come up with. Oh no, there's open cells. All right, so let me close some of those up here. Yeah, it's open. Obviously, that's open there. Yeah. Yeah, so that was pretty cool that Jeremy popped in to talk about his characters. I hope I did a decent job interviewing him and asking him questions so that you can get a little bit more information about his, his comic, his uh, upcoming projects and such. So that's always cool. Let's see. Ah, oh, yeah, that was good. See, I closed up those areas. Here. See, open areas, open areas are not good. I don't know where we open down here, right? Let's close that off. Close this off here and thicken this line a little bit. Make sure I don't have any other open areas. Another one there. All right. <laughs> no, no, I'm done. Done. No more. <laughs> Nine and done, man. That's enough. We're trying to get rid of kids now. Yes, sir. Waiting for them all to just start leaving. Start leaving on their own. Get out. <laughs> we don't raise you.
Smalls. Killing me, Smalls. Let's see here. Like closing up these areas. Yeah, it is. All right. Let's get in here. Got to throw this background in here real quick. El Verde Bunch of Scott. <laughs> yes, E, I am absolutely sure. I'm done. Done. No more. No mas. No mas. As the illustrious Roberto Duran once said. All right, I got to throw a background in here. Let me see. Something funky. I don't know what I got, man. Got to be something funky, right? What looks funky that I have here? Got all these patterns. I don't like it. I need something. No, no, that all looks like clothing. I thought I had like a, where is that? Yes, okay, here we go. All right, we're gonna throw that in there and see what happens. Oh no, I had, oh, I knew it. I had open spots. See, see what happens? Where's those open spots that I have? All right, I'm gonna have to do this the old fashioned way. Yes, I'm gonna put that in the description for sure. Um, thank you, E. Always uh, giving a, a good constructive word. I greatly appreciate that. Was that up there? See, I right, need to go back one here. All right, so I gotta close that up. Let me fill these in here. At least I know these are fine. These are fine. These are all closed up. Nope, that one's not. All right, so let me. My older not you know. Bro, bro, you know it. <laughs> hey, Scott, I like you, bud. I like you. There's a story. Yeah, I did pick up two more, E. So I got, um, I forgot he, he bought some work for me tonight. What the heck is his name? He picked up that Thanos piece, and he also backed the campaign. And I'm drawing a blank, a blank on his name. What the heck? You told me about it. Who was that, Scott? John Dillard loves Scott. I would have to agree. So E, you missed it. So on on the the auctions tonight, the first, I don't know. I want to say twenty five minutes was uh oh, it was pretty much all about what happened on the fan edition. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. Wow, that still didn't work out. All right, let me back, back that. Yeah. Yeah, I, dude, 
I don't even know. Like I, I don't even know. But maybe we can chat it up a little bit at some point here. So because I really don't know what happened. I'm hearing things, but you know, I, I like to I like to get the the full story before I um, make any judgments on anything. You know what I'm saying? Sounds a little sketchy. That's all I'm going to say about that. But without having full context. And lady, you were there. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't. Even, I don't know. I don't know what the heck. Yeah, I don't even know. Run into the drama, bro. I'm into getting my Chago campaign funded. That's what I'm into. Now, I've had personally had no problem when I've been on that show, but I know that that for whatever reason, uh, Rick, as he's such a nice guy, but he, I don't know why it seems like he gets drawn into this stuff, and a lot of it is like stupid, really. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I'm like, you guys have a, I don't know. I don't know. It's just nuts to me. All right. So I think I got this selected right. So let me drop my background there and see what happens. Yeah. Oh, no. Say it isn't so. What did I do? Something's not right here. All right. Let's drop that back in there again. All right, so we got most of it. So what I'm going to do here is on that layer, I'm just going to cut that out. Just going to cut that out. Boom, clear, done. All right, so we got funky background. Uh-oh. I missed a spot. I missed a spot. Right here. All right, so let's drop that in there. And clear this out here. Clear. Oh. And the Pro Edition. Okay. So they had a technical difficulties. All right. Yeah, like I said, I really don't want to talk about it here. I'm just drawing right now. But I'll get the uh, I'll get the gist at some point. Um, let's see, what can I do to do, do, do here? All right, let me. Let me go back in here. All right. Okay, I think that's it. Just a black and white drawing tonight. All right, so that is going to do it for me tonight. Uh, but before I leave, I want to wish Jeremy Lott a congratulations on his new baby. I also want to thank him for popping in on the stream and uh, talking to us about his project that he successfully funded, Monster or Movie Man, I'm sorry. And um, this was Venus, a character from that book, a uh, quick sketch that I did. Um, and I uh, uh, also want to thank the people that stopped in, uh, the viewers, the uh, people that liked and shared. I want to give a thank to uh, Tank Ferret. Also to ERT, Scott Schmier, Lady Celtic, and Marcus, who is up here somewhere. All right. Uh, yeah, Marcus Gibbons, and uh, just thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna call it a night, 
and uh, uh, see you guys and gals tomorrow. I'll be working on uh, Chango Pages and, uh, and, and working hard to uh, promote the book. Before we leave for the night, I need to um, just do a quick promo here for my book. See if I can get in there. And go to my page. All right, so we're going to go over here to the El Guapo page. We're going to go and we're going to play that um, a video. Uh, we're gonna play the video one more time. So here we go once again. For those of you that may not know, it's Chango. Now, as a teenager, he looks to be rid of this burden once and for all. But is it a curse or something more? So that's Chango for y'all, and uh, uh, let's look at the uh, the page one more time. We're gonna look at the, some of the perks that are available. Uh, right now, we're at six backers, eight percent funded. Uh, obviously, we've got a long way to go. We got fifty days, but we got a long way to go. Uh, and if you want to become a part of Team Chango, you can get in at the ten dollar rate, which will give you the PDF, which is gonna be available at the same time we ship in October. So that's gonna be uh, ten dollars. Uh, to you, that's going to be the full graphic novel, also including uh, any uh, of the back material, such as concept design, art, stuff like that. And for the uh, $25, that is your physical copy of the 56-page graphic novel that you get for just $25 in full color. And next we have the Chango graphic novel with a print that we will be uh, providing for this tier here to any backer at the $35 level. Then we have one of my favorites, the comic graphic novel of Chango plus your personal, a personal drawing of your personal demon done by me. Now listen, this is a great deal. I typically charge a lot more than what I'm charging here. It's just, a, I charge 55, to a hundred dollars for these type of drawings and you can get this drawing plus the graphic novel for 50 bucks it's an insane deal and then next level we've got the comic plus the ben postcard now ben is the go the ben goldsmith is the uh writer on the story with me and uh he does these uh where these postcards where he creates your own horror story on the back of a vintage postcard which is kind of neat and then if you go to the next level you're going to receive the comic the demon art and the postcard for just 75 bucks that's a fantastic deal people please do not miss out on this and then we're going to go over here to the next level where you can get drawn in the book do you want to see your lovely mug in a comic then you can get in on this i've got one i've got 10 of these available one has been claimed already and it's just a hundred dollars and you can be immortalized in a graphic novel comic book by by drawn by me by yours truly all right and then we have well, probably the best deal of all the whole enchilada you get the pdf you get the graphic novel you get the print you get the demon drawing you get the postcard 
and you also get drawn into the book. I have five of these. One has been planned, and it's only $150. That is nuts. That is crazy. That is a great deal. So please, please, please spread the word, share it, support if you'd like. I would love for people to get in on this. The more people that know about this, the more uh, the, the, the better off I'll be, and we'll be able to get to this goal and get this comic out there to you fine folks. All right. So with that being said, I want to wish everybody a great and awesome night. Thank you for those that came in, that liked and shared, and also that participated in the chat. I'll see you tomorrow more than likely. All right? You guys all have a good night. God bless. Bye-bye.